Jason doing the work of interpreting the sketch and then, um, you know, and then me, me and Jason working together to uh, interpret that into a 3D model and, and you know, really mm -hmm. try to capture the flavor of this, you know, kind of 70s and 80s wedge inspired uh, sports car. And yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the things that we, we got into right off the bat was, you know, you looking, looking at the sketch, there was no real defined side side deal graphics so uh we we kind of took a, a risky move and decided to go almost uh stratos on this thing and um yeah make make it a zero side glass design but just wrapping the glass over you know the windscreen over the, the pillar just enough to maybe get a little bit of side visibility and then and then pairing that maybe with some some uh, some screens or something inside so some, uh, some displays gives you side information uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, and it's it's a three it's a three passenger layout. I'll uh, one. Yeah, those lines are really really good. Gosh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Um, can, I mean, it's it's it, it's it's kind of like if Bertoni updated the X one nine that Fiat mm -hmm. that little Fiat X one nine. I mean, yeah, uh, it's got that kind of funky. Uh, it's not big, is it? It's quite small, actually, the car, but it has that funky Bertoni look kind of cool that, you know, really dynamic. It's yeah. cool. Um, let's see that in plan B. Yeah. Uh, wow. Jason, do you have um, like on the intakes on the front where you have the openings and things? Does, are those modeled to a certain? Yeah, there's see through through there. Wow. Yeah, they 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 are um, big enough for cooling the uh, air, uh, the front brake. Yeah, yeah, for the discs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. And then um, Ian Eric has. Have uh, discussed before. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though uh, the the way to going forward is to have a EV powertrain, uh, uh -huh. at the same time we we still consider the uh, heat how the heat that uh, uh, get getting out of heat yeah, yeah. heat oh, evacuation yeah. So, yeah exactly yeah we yeah. have um, we have some uh, heat sink from the back uh, at the rear uh, okay. so. Uh, has a really strong uh, uh, triangular element that we make the 70s era of um, some kind of uh, Italian flair of the, yeah. of the time, yeah. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. oh, did, did I do that? Yeah, yeah, just hit the red undo button. Okay. <clears throat> Is that come back? Yeah, there we go. I'll, I'll go ahead and lock cool. the door. So, so we're not doing that. But yeah, put out the light. Yeah. But yeah, you can see that the rear end is super functional. It's all about heat evacuation and airflow management. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we're even thinking these these panels above the, the rear wheels could be, you know, movable aero. Mm hmm Yeah. But, uh, Scott, you mean the... Or, uh, uh, below the red or below the uh, above the, um, red, the the body color section above the red it's it's, it's a complete separate panel i got it panel. okay yeah yeah, and then, that, yeah, yeah it, i see the cut jason you were you were thinking about the taillights being movable as well and, and yeah. you can you can see uh, straight, yeah you can see straight through into the rear tire as well so there's there's great you know heat evacuation airflow evacuation yeah. tire well yeah. as well yeah 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 it's cool Actually, when it breaks, so the, the the rear light will pops up and uh, make extra kind of um of uh air uh visible area for the rear car. So uh, uh -huh. it's kind of a uh, uh, kind of functional and aggressive at the same time. So uh, there's mm -hmm. so much uh, presence there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's um, it's that that light signature that we talk about all the time. If you're right driving behind this, you know, 50 yards behind it or 100, you you'd you'd know what you're driving behind at night because that that signature is unique. The other cool thing that is possible, Jason, is the bottom diffuser. Um, I think there's a new. It's called the EQ. XX, I believe, from Mercedes-Benz, the yeah. diffuser actually pulls back at speed, so you can elongate the 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 bottom diffuser here if you need to at higher speed, so that you mm. get more downforce. But that's that's really cool. Yeah. And um, the the idea with not having glass on the side above the belt line, typically, right? Um, is that some kind that wouldn't be any translucent material? It's just solid like that? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of ways we can do that. Um, you know, we could do huh. translucent material, but you know, I, I don't know if you, if you get inside it, it you'll see it's, it's fully lined out. I, I, I'm actually thinking. I saw that, yeah. So if you actually, you know, if you position yourself, you can click the home orientation button and get, get yourself back to one to one scale. Um, yeah. So if you yeah if you click um, this, this this button with the magnifying glass over the house this one here uh, where am I sorry yeah where with the magnifying oh, oh sorry yeah so if you click uh, on that that'll, yeah that snaps you back to one to one scale and then use just your left controller to position yourself in the driver's seat and oh okay yeah. no. so if you position yourself in the driver's seat you'll see that the forward vision even even out to the periphery is quite quite um quite good so if you just augmented yeah. that with you know you know with with some sort of you know digital display you know you could sure you could, yeah you could, you could see everything and, and yeah. so you can see the pillar structure is actually outside of the glass area so it's completely you know the glass is completely un unstructured yeah yeah i mean there yeah that's definitely a way to do it the other way to do it is imagine that the car is actually looking like it's uh, the surface area is like polished alloy or polished chrome or something. And then the glass area actually continues with that film that looks like it's, you know, uh, chrome or polished chrome, but you can see from inside out. You can't see from inside in. Right. Kind of right. Approach. That's that's the cheap way to do it. But so you could get that as, effect. That's cool. As you can see, we've we've um we we've laid out an an occupant position, but we haven't designed the interior. We've only trimmed out the, yeah. the main tub. But um, uh -huh. Jason, if, uh, on the sketch boards, Jason's already done quite a bit of sketch, sketchy brainstorming on the uh, uh, on the interior as well. So he's got some really interesting thoughts uh, on the interior. Can you go yeah. through that, Jason, on the interior? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So they're they're over here behind the car. On the left. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah on the, the on left side. Go towards the rear of the car here. Um, yeah. So he, he's got yeah. some thumbnail sketches along here all the way to this this uh render oh yeah yeah so jason talk a little yeah. bit about uh, your uh your interior concept so uh, since the exterior is really aggressive and low uh it's kind of remind me of uh, aviation uh and a fighting jet in the in the past so i mm -hmm. have the double double wing uh double deck uh inspired by the double that uh, fighting jet yeah. uh, to have a really centralized uh, driving position. Uh, so uh, the position will be, uh, the driving layout will be kind of like a McLaren F1. So it's a free, uh, free person tandem kind of style. Yeah. So um, yeah. uh, it retains the uh, driving comfortness at the same time, you have the aggression and the concentration for the driver to focus on mm -hmm. the road. Um, so basically, I did uh, some really uh, quick uh, sketches uh, inspired by the wing of the of the plane uh, mm -hmm. to have a kind of elevated kind of area. Uh, at the same time, since we uh, have a really open front end, uh, we have a big piece of glass, so we can make use of it uh, to see through the structure inside. So the dashboard actually integrated to the uh, to the structure itself. So uh, it's kind of uh, all linked full. So uh, it's minimalist and 
uh, and you have the luxury with uh, extra layers on top, kind of like a ladder flying mattress. Yeah. Uh, Frank, just the brown. Over, you, ha you have Frank, yeah. Frank, just really quick. If yes. You, if you scale yourself, scale the, the drawings up like this. You see how I'm getting smaller. Um, I can get yeah. really close to these drawings and look at like right down to the texture of the ballpoint pen. Um, so I, I can see that you're you're probably straining your eyes to look at these up close. Um, uh, so, I've so, just pulled it really close, but I, yeah, but you, so where is that scale function? So, so if you just take your, your grip buttons and your controllers and you just start spreading, uh, spreading your arms. You can, ah, got it. You, yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, Sorry. Starts getting, so that way you can really, you see how tiny I look now. I'm, I'm looking at this sketch like yeah. it's like six feet long and, and, uh, and, <laughs> yeah. and I can see the texture of the ballpoint pen and everything. So oh, you, that's you, you better, really yeah. get close to these sketches and look at them. Um, Okay. And, uh, so, yeah, if you, that, you're just, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, you're good. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, see how, see how nice okay. and crystal clear they look now? Yeah. 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 So you can really uh, Jason, that. you're really good. I can see, now I can see you're really, you're better than I thought you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I just said. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Really, so, yeah, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can that's that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, since the car is so lively and uh, brutal, uh, actually, I have some uh, soft side uh, to give some soft element to it. So, uh, many movable panels on the car and continue to film uh, the interior. I'm imagining the interior will open up when the driver gets in when, when it starts up. So um, yeah, this kind of theme uh, that uh, also inspired by the um, uh, aeronautic kind of um, uh, feel. Inspiration. Yeah, yeah, inspiration. Yeah, feel, yeah, yeah. So so Frank, then if you if you need to get somewhere quickly, you can just scale yourself back up, make everything small again, and then kind of move over okay. and then scale back up. You know, like oh and yes, then, right. and then you okay. can yeah. There you go. That's kind of how I move, move faster. <laughs> yeah, move one, jump move faster. Those, you know, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you're constantly okay. you know, scaling yourself up and down, but then yeah, yeah, but then being able to you know now you can really see the the texture of the sketch. You know, you can see the, the yeah. line quality. Yeah, um, it's much better. Yeah, yeah. Jason, do you have um like a heads up display or instrumentation for data for information? You know, driver yeah. info. So where, I, where is I, so it will be kind of a, a help display or holographic, I'm imagining uh, uh -huh. that will be displayed in the front area. Uh, so when it goes up, so you have a, a kind of a virtual dashboard or odometer in front so that you can mm -hmm. see uh, all the data and the information you need, yeah. And the outside top black is your mirrors for back, for looking back? Uh, yeah, uh, for not not your mirrors, but your screens for looking behind. Yes, that will yeah. be a kind of a uh, augmented uh, uh, kind of feeling. So uh, it's really immersive. So basically, you have uh, cameras of on both sides that you can mm -hmm. see on the on both sides of the vehicle. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, These are your air, uh, vents for HVAC for heating, cooling, the round ones? Uh, yeah, uh, they're HVAC and at the same time, um, you have um, can change the functions on, on the button. So uh, uh, I, I personally prefer like uh, in kind of uh, uh, this kind of project uh, we, it, uh, looking in the past, so we have some uh, physical buttons uh, will be, uh, uh, will be yeah. uh, quite a good fit for the for yeah. The film. yeah. I think in a so, in a car like this, people, it's one thing for a very luxurious, very comfortable car to just have you know a different interface, but for a car like this, it's to have the tactile functions, you know, that you feel yes. something. Happening also. 
Yeah. yeah. I think we, we will miss that. If we lose it, then there'll be a generation of drivers who grow up without it and they won't miss it. So uh, yeah. better not to lose it, lose it, keep it, keep it in, in cars like this, maybe. I, yeah, I think for going in high speed, I think to have some key functional uh, uh, key uh, buttons on physical mm -hmm. buttons that uh, could be, would be beneficial for the driver mm -hmm. and, and the passenger as well to uh, make uh, adjustment or control uh, in their journey. So uh, it's not yeah. that distracting as a, as a screen. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. yeah, that center column looks like uh, almost like a, a, a fuselage with wings coming to you, you know, like a aircraft uh, yeah. <laughs> profile from top almost. And it's nice. Thanks. The dri the passenger sit just just behind the driver. Just yeah, sort of I think left it's and at, right, at but the, behind them. Uh, I think it's at the knee point uh, where the passenger uh, the driver sits at the knee point of the passenger. So uh, okay, it's kind of a slightly offset, uh, but it should be in enough room and. Uh, to have this kind of arrangement of the interior, we can have a really uh, driver focus and really uh, you can centralize the mass of the car so yeah. we can have a, a slightly more, aggra more aggressive uh, kind of um, design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mannequin, did uh, Eric, did, did you guys work with um, 95 percentile? Mannequins, they're, they're, or is this... The gravity sketch mannequins are not 95. Yeah. 95. They're, they're more like smaller. 50. Yeah, they're more like 50. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> it helps. So it, it helps. <laughs> yeah. It helps when you want to put a little bit of cheat on the model. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's yeah. what this is all about. If you're going to make yeah. this something, you know, like production, then it's, it's you know, you crazy. You wouldn't get that feel, but. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, that's the position you want to sit in. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're out, you're, your peripheral vision is pretty good, even without the screen. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I've never sat, no, sorry, I have sat in a Stratos once. Um, it was amazing, but this is actually probably, it's hard to say. It's pro probably, this is probably, be I'd yeah. say it's better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like I'm sitting right in his you, spot. You are, Frank. <laughs> You're, it's it's VR. You're doing it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's cool because we can see your headset like awesome. floating right at the, the head oh, of the mannequin. Where is it? And your hands yeah. are right where yeah, the mannequin's feels... hands are. You know, I know. So, <laughs> and, you know, that's 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 the thing. No no other no other digital modeling medium enables uh -huh. you to experience the one to one scale immersive environment of a, of a car interior. You know, yeah, you know, and, and and nothing else gives you that one to one uh, scale representation of the exterior. You know, the proportions, the stance, and everything. You know, it's like you, yeah, you, you put you put hours and hours into a, a digital model on a on a desktop computer, and then you mill it full size, and it looks totally different, right? And yeah, and so, you and you still have no idea what it feels like if you're in in it unless you build yeah. that that wireframe buck or something. Yeah, Scott, did you when you did your Scott when you did your NFT uh, King Cob was it King Copper King Yeah mm -hmm. King Copper, you didn't design design it with a um, with an ability to be inside of it from a viewpoint, did you? No, I did. It actually has a full interior, so oh, it just, does. It hasn't, oh wow, hasn't been revealed yet. Um, yeah, but that's it's, what I was... but it's um, no, it's full. It's full one to one scale in the build, awesome. and then you can go inside and. Um, Okay. So yeah, everything fits, and it, it's just uh, obviously, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it's an amazing. Style yeah, I was. I've been following you on that. That's pretty cool too. Oh, thanks. Really yeah, good. that's it's yeah. super fun. I, it's just all. It's just basically all fun. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, that's that's the advantage of it. We're not worried about. I know. Certification I know. or regulation. Yeah, none of that. None of that. Yeah, cool. no, it's great. Great, 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 great. Fun. Yeah. Really cool. 
Um, what, Eric or Jason, what, what are the sort of next steps in regards to like a detail pass on the car, even if it's only in digital presentation yeah. mode, not, not in surfacing yeah. prep? But well, I just I have some questions about like the front fascia, what's going on. Yeah. you know down here and some ideas what you might think, try um, next there yeah so it's a couple of things that's one one is we're we're thinking about how how this thing is going to get milled right so the way we approach the details is going to be very important to mill it. obviously we're not going to have the budget to do a lot of 3d printed detail parts and things like that we're going to be just just a single pass play model milling, right and we're going to have to think about how we approach the details so that the mill heads can get in and, and do all that. Um, and then, um, yeah, obviously, in, in a digital form, we can continue going to town on details, but you know, the, the, the model might have to take a little time to that point. Right? Yeah, I think it should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, uh, yeah, and then, you know, in, in the digital world, we can go, go as far as we want to go. So um, I would love yeah. to do an interior on this thing. Um, I'd love to, you know, get you some and, um, and then, you know, I think, I think prior to milling, I still see a few little nagging um, issues with with um, the surface falling. So, yeah. um, I, think, I think we can, we can still continue to adjust. And, you know how it is, Frank. You can look at a play model for months and still find things. To yeah. 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 That's that's yeah. that's obvious. But where 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 are you concerned with it, Eric? Because it looks well, it I looks see, very good. I see a couple of things, like like for example, this 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 rear fender. You know how it changes direction yeah. here. Um, one yeah. one um, in certain views, it snakes a bit. So I uh -huh. want I want to just make some some little adjustments there. Um, okay. Okay, and then this uh, you know, this transition. Uh -huh. area, I'd like to improve a little bit. I mean, some of that yeah, you see. could probably just as easily just put a few swipes of uh, of a clay seal, but mm -hmm. that, that's an area of, of difficulty. Um, getting, you know, where where all these parting lines are, or we we actually separated the body panels, and so where 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 the oh. body panels meet, there's a there's a little bit of you know inconsistency right there. Yeah. The highlights, you know, yeah. And, you know, I may, mm -hmm. I may end up for milling, I may have to end up closing up these gaps and just running a smooth surface through there. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah. I, I see a little bit of a hole right here, um, like a low spot in, in curvature. Yeah. It's, either, it's either a high spot here or it's a low spot here. So, yeah. You mm. know, yeah, you can see it slightly. Just a little bit of. Mm. Um, yeah, it looks a little, it's just a tiny fraction flat, maybe. Yeah, I think it's the low there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you just punch the center line up slightly. Or... Um, Eric, did you work with the highlights when you were doing it? In other words, run like zebra light, uh, zebra stripes through it and that? Um, or? I've been mainly using this brown shader. Um, okay. And uh, and I, th I find it I find it really helpful. However, yes, we can yeah. do zebra stripes. Uh huh. With, with the zebra yeah, look at that. Like. Yeah, that's that's cool. And um. So, yeah, yeah see, see, tell a lot, you know. Yeah, it, it's the you know those areas like where you said where the uh, the core comes off the right uh, off the top of the rear fender and it comes right to the door shut line, yeah, and then you see the wiggles in there. That that helps to read that, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, right. this, this this area is actually working out quite well with the zebra stripes. I was gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. it's not that bad at all. Yeah. 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 You probably wouldn't even see. I mean, you might see that like in a high gloss shape, but in a clay, you would never see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, cool. Eric, can you, or Jason, can you talk a little bit about this yeah. undercut on the front wheel well? Um, you know, this how it's undercut inward, which is forcing your your tire and wheel further inward, so you get a big you know overhang. So I'm, oh, I'm curious about. Yeah, that's cool. I'm kind of curious yeah. to know a little more about that. Well, I, I, I've often used that trick in production cars as a way to um, get the tire body to be tighter, even if you're trying to meet certain coverage requirements. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, yeah, that's another area like of, of concern. Like I'm noticing that the front wheel is a little overbodied and the rear wheel is a little underbodied. So, yeah, so correct. Either, you know, we might just, 
easy thing to do is just tuck the rear wheel in and pull uh -huh. the front, you know, pull the front wheel out just a little bit. You know, and that, that'll fix that. But but yeah, I, I do I do oftentimes like to put a little bit of shadow on that on that wheel flap um, and not just hide it yeah. in the world. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's a trick that Ford started, wasn't it? I think sure. Ford was the first. I'd never seen it before. I saw it on a Ford that they started actually. I can't remember which one it was. Mm -hmm. Was, uh, but they start. You started angling the 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 wheel lip in. You know, you, you mm -hmm. exactly for the reason you're talking about. But yeah, I always thought that was really cool. Yeah, it meets the coverage requirements, but yet yeah, makes the tire body feel a bit tighter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now we're not really concerning ourselves too much with meeting tire envelope requirements. Nah. I, you know, I, don't, I don't have no, an engineer to help me figure that out. But um, <laughs> the uh, the the reg is is always thirty degrees to the front and fifty degrees to the back, be it yeah. front wheel or rear wheel. So yeah, that that's thirty degrees. That's fifty degrees, and then after that, you can just go in if you want. Yeah. But most cars today for aero try to keep it pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty bang on on the front leading edge of the front front wheel sort of area, but um, yeah. So, so what you're what you're seeing right now is basically a digital design review. Um, so yeah. Think about think about the experience of being in the studio. Everyone's sketches are on the wall. There's a clay model on the floor. We're all walking around it as a team, and taping mm -hmm. lines on it and putting notes on it, marking it up, and you know identifying all of the all of the uh, areas of opportunity for improvement and then and then mm -hmm. you pair that with the experience of working on a digital model you know over uh, over a desktop computer right so you're mm -hmm. you know, you're working with a digital sculptor you're standing over their shoulder looking at a little tiny monitor and trying to hand wave uh, you know design direction to them either that or you're going mm -hmm. back and giving them a bunch of uh, uh, notes in Photoshop, right? Where you might take a screen grab and yeah. just draw some notes in Photoshop. Either way, the yeah. modeler has very little concrete, um, you know, in, you know, direction to go on, other than you know your your words and whatever Photoshop you're able to give them. And so, uh -huh. you know, the, the 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 opportunity for misinterpretation is extremely high, right? And, and yeah, like here you can really go exactly in to the place you're talking about, yeah. and on a sketch. If you do it on a sketch, it's one view. Whereas here, you're rotating it around that that problematic area, yeah. And you can really, you know, communicate yeah. much clearer. Yeah. You're trying to get at. So you, you know, you can do it too with your ink with your ink tool. You you, you can just with the mm -hmm. right trigger. You can just start sketching notes right on the car. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. We even have uh, the ability, like we use the stroke tool. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I like to do this with a black stroke with like tape, but um, I can I can go in point mode if I want to do a more precise line. Let's say I want to do something with this fender. Um, mm -hmm. I can in point mode put a nice clean line on it, right? And then just like a piece of tape, uh, in my edit settings I can turn on snap and it'll snap the points to the surface. Uh, to find the surface um, closest yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you'll see now that the the the, the, the point <clears throat> starts sticking to the surface. See how it's kind of sticking. Yeah. Yeah. And so That's I'm actually cool. putting a line right on the surface, like a piece of tape. Mm. And and if um if I need more points to define the the, the curve, I can just mm -hmm. add more you know just add more points so so I can get mm. get around that. Um, but but now now the, the line is actually sitting on the surface like a piece of tape. And I use the flat, you know, technically it's a tube shape, but um but the um so te yeah, technically the line is a tube shape. Um yeah. but with the flat shader, it just looks like a piece of tape. So Eric, let's imagine that's a it's probably more, but let's imagine it's a six mil piece of tape. Yeah. And you're telling the clay modeler that you want that line to taper more as it goes past the front wheel. You want it to taper more inwards to give it more, you know, like an arrowish front end. So you want to pull the core in towards the center as it comes towards towards the front end. Then you would lay it down, but you're gonna you're gonna still have to keep it from floating off the surface. Yeah. 
right? Right. So uh, you want to add? Let's let's just demonstrate. Maybe if you want that that tape line, right? Uh, so pulling the front corner in more or accelerating more in. Yeah. So I you know I can duplicate the line. Yeah. And and I can I can give it you know um, the paper at the ends. You know, I could say mm -hmm. the other thing is I can actually taper the, the line itself. So mm -hmm. so if I grab this point and, and use my joystick, I can taper it. Oh, ah, cool. So I can get it tapered to zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. So now it's interesting. I'm, I'm as I snap to the surface, I'm actually not able to get a clean line because there's actually a problem with the surface there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we were putting tape on a car, it would be the same thing. You would have to say, okay, you put a little ball of clay underneath the tape to keep yeah. it up in but certain here, areas or what. But you could. Yeah, if I need to do that, I can just turn <clears throat> off the snapping and I can just, you yeah. know, I can just raise the point. So I can just float the point mm -hmm. above the surface. So if, I needed, oh, cool. if yeah. I needed to tell the sculptor to raise the line, I can just, I can just pull the line up. Yeah. Just, you know, just turn off the yeah. snapping. Um, yeah. 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 And then you go back to your surface, turn on snapping, and then you yeah. snap it back to the new line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and now, and then the other thing I can do is I can export, if I have an alias modeler, I can export mm -hmm. this line and it'll come in as a curve and alias that they can work to. Uh, so, so let's nice. say, let's say this model was built in alias and we imported it into Gravity Sketch just for a review. Um, mm -hmm. we, we can do that and then we could, we could, you know, draw all the lines that we want and then we can export those lines as curves back to the alias sculptor. Yeah. So, so now they have exact, exact direction to work to. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Pretty fun. There we go. There's your play color. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. Is it, is it, is it, oh, it even smells color? like... Smells like sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that smell. Oh, They're all going never, non. I never miss that smell. Yeah. I, part of the uh, reason I, I oh, got I so that. much into 3D digital modeling is I hate, uh, I just hate clay. I hate it smell in my shoes. Clay. I hate it on my shoes. I've ruined so many pairs uh, of yeah. shoes. I'm tired, oh, yeah, of having, yeah, totally. I'm tired of having having to put rubber floor mats Scraping on my car. Scraping the floor. Like, you know, my, <laughs> my, all my right, cars but... had rubber floor mats, so I wouldn't get, get it yeah. in the carpet. And you, know, uh, you have your pair yeah. of clay, clay shoes and yeah. your, get your your studio shoes. Yeah, getting your fingernails, getting your hair. <clears throat> getting your, you know, just, yeah. It, 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 it's kind of so like, uh, you guys remember Castrol R bean oil? Two-stroke Castrol R bean oil? Oh. Oh, Awful it's, it, you can buy, can no, oh, oh, it's addictive. It's almost like they even sell candles now that you can light up at home and it <laughs> makes that smell. <laughs> you can get, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what do they run in top fuel dragsters? Nitro, nitro methane or something like that? Top oh, fuel. Yeah, yeah uh, nitro, nitro blister. Uh, that's, that's, that's well, cool. yeah, they probably mix a bit of that. <laughs> but you can get candles that have all those classic smells. I wonder if they do, uh, what was it? Chavant clay. Chavant. It? Oh, sure, that's the stuff that really smells. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, yeah. That's that's the sulfur yeah. killer yeah, stuff. The, but yeah, that was the early early Chavant, and they went to the J20 stuff, and that got rid of <laughs> yeah. a lot of the smell, but it became yeah. really waxy and kind of didn't adhere great. So yeah. yeah. Uh, Scott, uh, Eric, do you guys remember the uh, what was it acetone we used to use for markers that we would blend? Oh, xy xylene. Xylene, xylene yeah. is the, the man. Nasty. We're still alive. Can you believe it? Uh, yeah. Just well, barely. Yeah. You know, I, honestly, I'm just fortunate. I, I got past all of that in school, so I, I was doing all that. Yeah. School, and then as soon as, as soon as I got into the real world, the uh, everything had switched to digital. So I, from there, I was just yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 just you just made it it's out safe. Gosh. Yeah, we used to, I don't know, at, at home, you'd be working with that stuff in your small room and stuff, and you'd be like, I don't know, wired, you wouldn't want to go to sleep because it, you know, <laughs> sniffing yeah. it, and oh my gosh, terrible stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but, Eric, this, yeah, that's, uh, that's really cool. can you tell me a little bit about this line? It's got like a little bit of an S to it. Yeah. This, it's, this it's, uh, where the graphic meets to the glass, is that on... It's a, you have it some needs, other. It needs a little bit of adjustment. The intent is to, is to yeah, uh, you know, a nice cleaner sweep. 
Yeah, I think it feels to me like it wants to be a big positive curve down into the, you know, where the fender meets the side window there. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I would go sort of either or, right? If you're going to go the S, I'd probably exaggerate it a little more or go for the big positive sweep that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. so, so what I can do is I can create a plane here and with a slight sweep to it. And, and just yeah, that's great. Body. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I can see exactly where I need to adjust the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you sit in over here, uh, now you can tell. I just need to bring it in a little bit here. Where's your yeah. viewpoint on that? Are you looking straight down on it? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just doing a natural intersection of a, of a curved plane. With, mm -hmm. with the with this line and I can see where, where oh, okay I see where you're going is deviating and yeah. that's helping me maybe figure out where where I need to adjust that line. So right. Yeah. Yeah I, I was citing from the very nose of the car if you get down here low, right? Shrink mm -hmm. down small up to the front center and then you can cite the line really easily leaving yeah. from this this little yeah. point. <laughs> so if I yeah if I do that and I just if I just tilt tilt the plane this way a little bit, you can see. I could I could just take take this whole line out a little bit this way. Over. Yeah. 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 It just it was it's just a the question about that line was what it's doing here at the end. Yeah. Right. Was, there's yeah, a quick there's a quick return, and yeah. then I think one way to also maybe make that a little bit more interesting is maybe placement of a logo or something. You know, for a focal yeah. point. Right there, uh, floating in the glass. Yeah. I think somebody has to do it. Yeah. That was the other sort of interesting twist about this car. I was yeah. sort of acting as the sculptor and as the studio manager. So and I, I, I've been in that situation mm -hmm. before where I, I, I had a project at um, one of my previous employers where. Uh, I had a, uh, I was a manager. I had a, a young designer working for me, and we didn't have any digital models available to do models, so I did the models. So here, here I was, you know, trying to take direction from a kid out of school, but then at the same time I was manager, so I could tell him, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Right now. And then, then he, he got all mad and I'm complaining to the uh, director. <laughs> So yeah, but it was uh, it's kind of a but uh, it worked out. It was, an, it was a fantastic model. Uh, we, were, we were actually able to go send it to a, a, a job shop in Italy, have it mailed directly in hard foam and uh, a little bit of bondo, and it went straight to uh, a market research center. Awesome. Cool. As, uh, sorry. Scott. No, no, I'm just thinking about some lightening up this this sort of very blunt, brutal front end with a secondary, you know, air intake Theater. or something through here. To it, it just feels a little bit too bold. Maybe uh, Eric, just in the digital version, not not worrying about that for the the mill version. Yeah, yeah. Or or opening up that sort of triangle area. Yep. Um, yep. Something up there. It just I think when you get itself. actually get light on that surface, yeah. it's going to stick out and be a bit too blunt. Yeah, a bit like a, a wall. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In, in the shadows, yeah. it's fine. It disappears, but I think when you get the light on it, it might be yeah. too much. Yeah. Could you could even you could even uh, you see how um, when it comes up the the top edge of that wall basically sits pretty deep compared to the front of the uh, hood. You could lean it even more and make it turn even darker. So so it's basically- uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that well, and there's further. so much front overhang. You got tons of room to play around with that quite a bit. Yeah. I don't imagine yeah. there's anything in there that's gonna force you to have that vertical. Yeah. It would yeah. help in side view. Yeah. They probably even throw a wing or something into that that opening that you have, Jason. The opening for the brake cooling, yeah, you might want to put a little bit of interest in there, just something that that catches some light or something, so it doesn't just look like you 
you know, just carved out of a massive hole there. A, a wing yeah. could kind of look like it's deflecting air to a certain area or something. Yeah. And, there's a there's a tiny little oh, what's cool about the the clay shading is you can see right there on the front corner uh the the highlight has a little bit of a weird weird up and down sort of thing yeah you see it right oh, yeah, there yeah yeah that's yeah, in the, yeah in top view there's a little there's a little hollow mm -hmm. and then a shape yeah. like that right through here in probably, plan view probably for the milling i'm going to probably just get rid of these gaps uh, and, and run them through mm -hmm. smooth surfaces that would be a lot easier. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Jason, how do the headlights work? These are uh, sort of like blades that uh, LED, I mean, they'll illuminate or something, but they're kind of like, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, uh, yeah. basically they, they are like a extension of the of the center construction. So we okay. have time shape in the middle and then we have wings and the base that continue to slide. Um, the idea is to have a kind of a, like a pop headlight, but instead of mm -hmm. popping up the cover, we have a slide a sliding sliding piece that goes into the body side. So, um, oh. Yeah, it's, uh, when it's not in use, we have a really full clean volume on top of the clamp. Uh, uh -huh. uh, but in use, we, we can have some, uh, yeah, kind of uh, add some mystery, uh, mystery on, on the design so that uh, people mm -hmm. wonder where the headlights are. So, yeah. yeah, they're kind of extension of the wings. I see. Um, let me see on your renderings. Uh -huh. Yeah, but so you know, so the renderings have a lot of different, I think, a lot of different interpretations. Interpretations, uh, so, so, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I think what you know, what I did in the model was really just try to do something fairly simple that that, that yeah, would, you know, be minimal and um, and I think I think that the twin blade, either the twin blade or I think this, you know, this this thing is quite strong as well. Um, uh huh. Yeah. I don't think you either. One. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this one can continue the lines of the of the shaft lines. We have the cutting lines on the exterior, so it's so natural that for kind of uh, and it's a very special looking. So mm -hmm. I think it would be cool to have an extension of the line that continues on top of the, of the uh, bonnet. That's a light, light line? Uh, yes. It looks like, yeah, like it's illuminated. Mm -hmm. So I, I have been uh, exploring for headphone design for, for many types uh, to have some co more conventional and, and uh, at the end, we chose to do um, some, something more uh, conceptual uh, using the opportunity to see the pressure underneath. So, so that we were thinking to uh, extend the line uh, that continues the line, the passing line, or the continues the, the head line, uh, to, towards the front mm -hmm. uh, structure. So, yeah. Jason, one of the, you know, the advantages of working in this digital world is that when you sight your headlights from the front, right, you have to be cautious of, and unfortunately, some practicality here, but, you know, with this, this headlights being set deep and this line in plan view cutting quite, you know, across your only functional area of the light is kind of just going to be side of the corners so it might be fun to consider because when you look from the front right when you look this way you try to see a headlight because effectively if you put your head down on the ground that's the part that's going to shine to the road it might be fun to see a light like this 
And it, maybe it does some new version of a pop-up where it comes out of that well and pops up, vert you know, like this. So it hinges to get up mm. into its functional mode. You got your yep. your beam projector beam up towards this corner. But that might oh, be a cool. fun a fun pop-up yeah. is this fan yeah. that pops up like this to yeah. get up and out of the shadows, yeah. so it can actually work. Yeah. Yeah. So you look look from the front. There's not much you can see there. The Could lights. also yeah, that, that's cool. That's a that's a new new interpretation of a pop up headlight. But yeah. it could also be maybe like um, prismatic, a prismatic lens that when it with light hits it, it also turns it, you know, uh, sideways or something, so you can get illumination from from the side kind of thing. Um, th that's what you were speaking about, I think, right? Where you can get some. Yeah, it's just I think you're. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. some some sight some projection issues when you get your head down mm -hmm. like where I'm at right now, low in yeah. front. And if you imagine yeah. that I'm wanting to see, can the light reach the ground? Right, mm -hmm. and it, mm -hmm. it's going to have a hard time because of this this body panel yeah. that cuts across it. So yeah, somehow they either are come, or um, they've got to go further this way, and the opening has to get bigger. It's so annoying to mm -hmm. lose the you know yeah. be constrained by light <laughs> so, yeah. yeah yeah but it's the reality of it yeah uh, but there it, it i think the constraint can inspire uh innovation so i think by yeah new solutions yeah yeah new solutions exactly you had uh i think you had like a side side repeater side marker around one on some of the sketches he's got it it's kind of like um that little oh, yeah, dimple that you put on the side yeah yeah there's one there's one right here that one exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The mall. It's the, the, mall. Yeah. the beauty the beauty, the beauty mall. Beauty mall. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're, we're looking at Sophia here. Sophia Loren's uh yeah. <laughs> genetics. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, to have uh, the headlamps uh, pops up and uh, in the angle would be interesting to have uh, uh as a functional pass as well when the air can actually flow through the the wings. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 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 That's, I think it's looking great. Yeah. That you know, you have that that effect also on those on those headlight lenses, like the green line. When you line up when you put a light into a, a piece of plastic or something, mm. the edges of the yeah. plastic light up. Yep. And in this sense here, you could get that kind of effect if even if you tilted it up, you could theoretically say that the edges of the fin are the lighting surface. Yeah. Um, you might make it a bit thicker, but that could be the part that illuminates. Um, yeah. Would that be, uh, Jason, you see um, on your headlight cut out the black uh, surround underneath it, you have sort of a um, flat spot. Theoretically, that could be an outlet for air. It could probably look a little bit more exciting than just having a lot of black material in, in that area in front of the, uh, the lens. You see, even if you put a mesh or some kind of, um, I don't know, a, is it possible to throw grasshopper functions on to the materials uh, here? You can, you can actually texture map a PNG image of a. Of a yeah. So oh. if, you had a, if you had like a mesh yeah. pattern on a PNG file with right. the background, um, you could and texture map that just, on the surface. Yeah. And would it would it actually cut out the material, or would it just represent? Yeah, yeah it would. So it, it would, would cut it up. See through mesh. Yeah. Yeah, you could add a bit of excitement yeah. to that yeah. area, as yeah. well as what what, Here, what maybe we were Scott, what you were saying about that black wall down here, you know, just pure sort of laser pierce it sort of. Yeah, it, with, this uh, it, this is just a texture map that shows you the um, uh, transparency is preserved uh -huh. when you yeah. and so you could apply that to a surface and you would get cool. the see through effect. So yeah. yes, yeah. you can fake it. Yeah, yeah fake it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah, look at that. That yeah. that's cool. So, and I can make it a different color too. You know, mm -hmm. 
Uh, no, if you bring it in white, you can control yeah, the color and yeah, value. Bring it in but if you bring white. it in black, you can't. This one happens yeah. to be red. Oh. Um, yeah, you can actually bring in wood patterns and you can match them. The only thing is that, oh, here's, here's a white one. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. So now if you, you, if you overlay, yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the only thing is in, in, in Quest, if, if you're on a Quest, um, mm -hmm. the file will get really heavy quickly if you start yeah. doing a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, if, yep, yeah. yeah. It's PC, already big. Um, if you're on a PC, you can handle uh, much, much more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And um, did you say, Eric, that you would mill, try to mill it without the shut lines, the door cut lines and things? Yeah, yeah. But just it, sort of, you know, it just makes it easier to control the surface. Um, yeah. You can always tape on the lines, you know. And, and yeah. Wants to yeah. Mill. You once you've got it, yeah. 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 That's, true. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I would do it. Yeah, I would normally never cut lines like this, but I, I wanted to try it. Um, but yeah. It, yeah it's in, because in, in this particular design, especially as you get towards the rear, the mm -hmm. cut lines are such a big part of the, the character of the car. It's not just a line yeah. drawn on the surface. It becomes, you know, part of the graphic part yeah, of well the that, surface. Yeah. 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 It's, got a, it's got an edge to it. Yeah. 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 And, and so the car, the, the design as a whole sort of transitions from this very smooth classical front end to a, this very, very sort of mechanical Functional rear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Jason, you like it? Yeah. That's good. Cool, it, huh? it's, it's so good. Nice. Yeah, just from that one sketch. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. awesome. And yeah, uh, Eric, uh, Eric and Scott really helped me to uh, create this model to, to make it look fabulous. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine seeing it come to life in 3D is just uh, and in virtual, you know. <laughs> it's well, I think, and I, it, yeah, this guy's, I mean, Jason and Eric, you did a great job at interpreting mm. and retaining that side view sketch into this three dimensional model, right? The tendency yeah, usually as, to start as you guys have gone into 3D, you can yeah. start to see what works and what doesn't work on the sketch. And then you can work it out here on the, on the 3D. And it actually looks even, I would say this looks better, not better, you know, not in that sense, but here, the, the volume model is much more exciting now. Yeah. Yeah, well, this has been an awesome experience. Um, really, really appreciate the input from, from both of you. Um, you know, from um, Second here. Yeah, I really appreciate the uh, the input from everyone, and, and it's been a great experience. And I hope I hope this gives you a taste of how Gravity Sketch can can really bring back a lot of the, the magic of working in a studio with physical models and having your team all together in a room and. Um, but do, doing that in a digital form where everybody is, is location independent. I'm in California, Scott's in California. We've got Jason in Hong Kong, Frank in the UK, uh, Jaron in Austin. I mean, it's, it's just pretty amazing that we're all here in a room together looking at this full scale car and looking at the sketches and, and having, having a real conversation. So really, really appreciate uh, your participation in this. I hope, I hope you feel the same way. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. No question. Awesome. Super. Beautiful. Yeah. It's been cool just for me, from my perspective, just watching it all unfold. So, um, 
it's always like magic to me every time feels like it never gets old. So this is super cool, really awesome work.